All right, okay. So, <laughs> all right, so hello, dears. Ayan, hello, hello. Hi, how are you all? I hope you're doing fine. Hello again and welcome to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. And for this lecture, what we're going to discuss are your stool concentration techniques. Ayan, okay. So, actually, we're almost done now with para. Oh my gosh, ang bilis. Paspas ka ayo ang time. Like, whew. Alright. So, I think we're halfway na sa activities natin. Mga quite mabilang na lang, no? I can already count with my fingers on one hand the remaining activities that we have to perform and discuss in our class in para. And then we're done with the semester. Third year na kayo. <laughs> Hopefully, yes naman. Third year na. <laughs> ready, ready na. Okay, anyway. Alright, so for this lecture, what we're going to discuss are your stool concentration techniques. Okay, so again, these are another way or another methods. These are methods, again, to um, uh, examine, okay, your stool specimens. Alright, okay, so kabante na mono daghan ju ka yung um, procedures <laughs> when you're examining stool specimens which is of course reasonable naman because again your stool is considered to be the most commonly uh, submitted specimen in the laboratory and aside from that again most of your parasites they can be recovered from your stool all right so again it's very much reasonable why there are a lot of procedures um, in examining stool okay and one of these are again your uh, stool concentration techniques. Okay, now what are these stool concentration techniques? When do we perform this? Okay, now uh, <laughs> concentration, di ba? Si, <laughs> si mommy crazy. Yes, naman, ako concentrate siya. Okay, all right. Anyway, actually, ako kita glaing picture, no? So, um, on concentration techniques. Um, and these, so, murag, ako na lang gigamit yung mga memes. Para naman medyo funny. Char. Okay, all right. Now, what are these concentration techniques? We use these techniques in the examination again of stools, but only, or not only, but in the case, especially in the case of light infection. Okay, so when you say light infection, um, light, no, konti pa lang, no, the amount of parasites in your stool are just quite little, all right, um, that it may cause a negative direct fecal smear reading. If I recall in our last uh, topic, which are the preparation of your wet mounts and fecal smears, yes, so um, because of it, because your infection is still light, no, or it's just the parasites that can be found in your specimen are just little, no, it can lead to a negative, false negative um, direct fecal smear reading. Hence, um, it's very much important to perform uh, these uh, concentration techniques because again, um, these, in a way, by the name itself, concentration, no? it concentrates or it aggregates no? or it gathers all the parasites that can be found in your stool specimen so that it can be examined okay? or so that they can be seen. Okay? And that is really important in light infections because, again, when we say light infections, the number of eggs that may have been found or that can be found in your specimens are just quite little, okay? And because they are just little in number, then they can be missed, okay? They cannot be um, recovered or cannot be seen under the microscope or in your direct fecal smear reading. Hence, we perform these concentration techniques, okay? It can be formed on both fresh uh, or preserved stool specimens, okay? All right. Now, again, it can, uh, it's designed to, to recover protozoan cysts. Helminth eggs, microsporidial spores, <laughs> coccidian oocysts, and larvae of your helminths. And again, as mentioned, trophozoites cannot. Okay, it cannot be recovered. Why? Because they do not survive the procedure. And it's very much reasonable, but then very much understandable. Because again, as mentioned, your trophozoites are very, very sensitive. You know? They are very prone to mga harsh environment. And concentration techniques usually most of the procedures, they uh, utilize centrifugation, okay? So you need to put it in a centrifuge, and that is quite a harsh environment. So therefore, hence, <laughs> your, your trophozoites um, cannot survive, okay? So usually, uh, seldom lang, no, or rarely do we recover trophozoites from these concentration techniques. Why? Because again, they cannot survive the procedure, no? So survive because they're very sensitive. Okay, all right. Ayan. But the rest, no, protozoan cysts, coccidian oocysts, microsporidial spores, helminth eggs, larvae, yes na yes, they can be recovered using your concentration techniques. Okay. Again, what is the purpose? We aggregate, we gather, we accumulate, no, atong huwaon tanan, no? 
we get all the parasites that can be found in the stool, all right, in a concentrated, all right, or in a sediment or in a flotation surface film, basta in a sediment or yeah, into a small volume of the sample. And aside from that, we also remove as much debris, fecal debris that can be found in your stool sample that could hinder the examination of the medical technologist of you. Uh, while examining the feces, diba? Because again, your feces contains a lot of things, <laughs> or a lot of stuff, okay? Both um, pathologic and non-pathologic, diba? So, it's very much important uh, through these procedures, these fecal debris, okay? Those unwanted, sam uh, unwanted things, mga artifacts, they will be removed, okay? And leaving those parasite eggs, okay? Or those parasites that we want to examine. So, it's very much easier for us to examine the stool sample, okay? All right, Ayan. And we have two types, two general types or methods of concentration techniques. We have either methods that um, employ flotation, and the second type are methods that employ sedimentation. Okay, so we'll go into that later. What are the difference of the two? And both, metho <coughs> both methods, they use differences in specific gravity and centrifugation to separate the parasites from the fecal debris and increase again in parasite recovery. Now, what is specific gravity? Do you remember ba in your basic physics or chemistry? Diba? Specific gravity is a, or for short, SG. This is a ratio or a comparison between the density of a fluid no, to the density of um, water. Okay? All right. Am I right? Mumbai na definition of specific gravity. But anyway, yes, that's SG. So um, generally, if we have an increased SG, no specific gravity. If increase ang SG, okay, what does that mean? If increase SG, it means your fluid is much more concentrated. Okay, so it's much more concentrated or mas taas ang concentration. Whereas if gamay ang SG, medyo decreased ang concentration. Okay, now for SG, it doesn't have a unit, okay? Because again, it's a ratio, di ba? I, I'm not sure if it's density ba, or I think volume. I have to check, guys. I forgot the definition, <laughs> okay? But yeah, sige. So again, SG increase, um, yeah, it meaning increase po ng concentration, and decrease SG, decrease concentration. Ang fluid, okay? All right, and usually it doesn't have a unit, and usually mag start siya mga 1.010. Like that, okay? Usually, it starts with 1.010. Uh, and the SG of your distilled water, or water, yes, is 1.000, okay? All right, so very important, especially the concept of SG when you go to your urinalysis. Uh, in the third year, yes, when you talk about urine, uh, this is one of the parameters that we examine in your urine because... Um, examining specific gravity in urine can indicate already um, a lot of diseases, okay? Or a lot of uh, characteristics of urine that pertain or that can point to a disease, okay? All right, because again, it talks about concentration, all right? So if taas ang SG, if the SG is high, it could mean that your fluid is concentrated. It has a lot of solutes, no? It has a lot of um, <clears throat> dissolved substances, no? But, and in comparison, if decrease ang SG, then of course, uh, decrease in concentration. So, there are little uh, dissolved solutes. So, little concentration lang of the fluid. Alright? So, we use the, those differences of the reagents that we use in these methods and the SG of the parasites themselves uh, to, um, to perform these methods. Okay? Alright. Ayan. And the situation, or ideally, we should perform both sedimentation and flotation on each of our sample. But then again, that is not practical, okay? And it's time-consuming, no? Uh, because these methods are quite time-consuming, most of them. So if you perform each sample, imagine, example, if you work in a public hospital, government hospital in the Philippines, in one shift, meaning like example, 8 a.m. to um, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. like that, your shift, uh, 8 p.m., 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. like that. No, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. <laughs> Yes, bakit ako na ganun mga shift? But anyway, one shift, example, government hospital in the Philippines, you can process to as much as 100 fecal samples. And imagine you perform each of that uh, with um, a flotation method and a sedimentation method. And each method is time-consuming. It needs a lot of reagents. It can also need a lot of stool samples. So it's really, really not 
practical. Okay, it's impractical to perform. So if you have to perform either of the two, it's recommended that you perform the sedimentation methods. Okay, any of the sedimentation methods. Why? Because it's much more efficient and it's easier to perform accurately. Okay, so it, because again, it can um, recover quite a lot of parasites then. You'll know later on as we go along with the slides. All right. So again, that's the ideal. You perform one flotation method and one sedimentation method on each of your stool sample. That's ideal. But not all that is ideal should be performed in reality because not all that are ideal are practical. Okay. All right. So that's another, yes, exhibit A. It's not practical, especially here in the Philippines. So if you need to choose between the two methods, what shall you do or what shall you choose? You choose sedimentation methods because these are much more recommended because they are efficient, okay, very efficient, and they can also be easier to perform, okay? Uh, and they also yield accurate results, all right? Okay, uh, yeah. so concentration technique with mommy Chrissy. <laughs> okay, all right, now we go now to the different methods. Um, so these are, again, methods, but we have two general types. We have the flotation methods and the different techniques under these methods. You have brine flotation by Willis. <clears throat> Next, you have zinc sulfate flotation technique. And lastly, you have Sheather's sugar flotation technique. So those are the methods for the flotation um, type. And lastly, for sedimentation methods, we have first a simple gravity sedimentation technique. Next, you have acid either concentration technique. Technic, technique, AECT, and you have formalin, ether, or ethyl acetate concentration technique, that's FECT or FECT, FECT, <coughs> FECT, <coughs> FECT, <laughs> and lastly, you have merthiolate, iodine, formalin, formalin, or formaldehyde, ether concentration technique, and we'll go through each of these methods individually, okay, all right, ayan, so we'll start first, um, Ah, okay, sorry. Those in red, no, those are what we're going to perform in the laboratory. Okay, as yes, I think if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, yeah, so just one method from flotation and one method from sedimentation method. So we'll provide a video again on the procedure, no, laboratory demo for this methods. Okay, so one flotation, the brine flotation, and one sedimentation method, which is your formalin ether ethyl acetate concentration technique. Okay, all right. So we'll start first with the flotation techniques. With, of course, the first type, I know, before that, a, a, a brief <laughs> uh, overview pala. So when you say flotation methods, the parasites are less dense than your reagent. And that is why, because they are less dense, they tend to float to the surface. Ayan. So by the name itself, flotation. So we're going to recover the parasites at the top of the reagent or at the top of the uh, mixture. Okay, why? Because your parasites are less dense. Okay, so meaning must light, they are lighter than your um, reagents, diba? So what happens, diba? basic physics, if you are less dense than the fluid around you, you tend to float, okay? So you go to the top, you rise to the top, you go, diba? You go, <laughs> you go to the top, Elsa, okay? <laughs> All right, so because you are less dense, okay? Um, you are much lighter than the surrounding fluid around you. All right, so that's the principle of these. So again, where do we recover the parasites? At the top, at the surface of your, um, uh, of your preparation, okay? And aside from that, it produces a cleaner preparation compared to your sedimentation techniques, okay? That's one of its advantage, cleaner preparation. All right, now the reagents, what, uh, those that we can use, of course, zinc sulfate. That's why we have a zinc sulfate flotation technique. You could also use magnesium sulfate, brine, yes, brine flotation, and you have sugar for sheather sugar now what are the what are the common what is the common characteristic of all the reagents they have higher specific gravity about 1.18 to 1.20 now your specific gravity of your parasites usually are um i think if i'm not mistaken 1.03 to 1.23 i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken i think i've read this online or 1.05 not sure, okay, but that, that's the range of the specific gravity of your parasites, okay? Um, so the, the specific gravity of your agents are quite higher than your parasites, okay, except for just some of the parasites. Then, because again, they are less dense, they are lighter, then they tend to float. So they can be recovered at the surface, okay? So that's the principle, all right. Exposure of the parasites to high SG, again, when you say high SG, that's 
high concentration, di ba? High SG, high concentration. Because of that, your parasites will be exposed to high concentration for quite some time. It can cause distortion and shrinkage of protozoan cysts and your thin-walled nematode eggs. Example, mga hookworm, di ba? Hookworm eggs, your thin-walled nematode, nematode eggs. All right? Especially after, after 20 minutes. Okay? So they start to be distorted na. So it's important that you examine that, examine your preparation as soon as possible. Okay? All right. It's ideal for nematode eggs, okay? Because again, they're quite light, except lang for the eggs of Trichuris and Capillaria. Now, why do you think so? Why? Diba? What, what is common between, uh, with the eggs of Trichuris and Capillaria? They have the bipolar plugs, diba? Recall in our uh, discussion in the parasites in fecal smears, yes? They have both polar, polar plugs, bipolar plugs, and these plugs are quite heavy, okay? So, Generally, because these plugs are heavy, then because they are heavy, the eggs are heavy, they tend to settle at the, uh, they tend to sink, okay? They do not float, all right? So they cannot be recovered using flotation methods, okay? But the rest of your nematode eggs and your protozoan cysts, they can float to the top, okay? They can rise to the top. They can Elsa, <laughs> they can Elsa, <laughs> all right? Okay, hi, teacher, funny. Okay, and of course, larger eggs, especially those eggs of fasciola and fasciolopsis, your trematodes, no? They cannot rec uh, be recovered or they cannot float because, again, they're heavy, all right? Okay, now some of the methods, again, brine flotation by Willis. You have zinc sulfate and sheather sugar flotation technique. So, again, here are some of your eggs, fasciola and fasciolopsis. As you can see, quite similar appearance, diba? Right? As I've mentioned in our discussion and uh, you've discussed it in your lecture also fasciola and fasciolopsis they quite look the same in their eggs okay and they are quite big so they are heavy all right so they're heavy so they will not float they will sink all right so they will not be recovered using flotation techniques okay all right again all right so we'll start first with your first method which is the brine flotation method by the name itself you use saturated table salt solution or brine solution now, the advantage is really it's low cost and very simple because, again, you can use, no, it can be, uh, it's very convenient, no, you can get this reagent anywhere or from your kitchen, diba? you have salt naman. All right, so saturated table salt. When we say saturated, too much salt lang, maraming salt na nilagay, okay? All right. Disadvantages lang, number one, helminth eggs of hookworm schistosoma, they can shrink, badly shrunken. And again, not useful for operculated eggs. What do you mean op operculated, diba? Recall, they have an operculum, usually seen in your trematode eggs. So when you say operculum, it looks like a hatch, diba? Ayan, a hatch, para siyang door, okay, that opens when the larva inside the egg goes out, diba? Diba? Okay, okay, diba? <laughs> Alright? Operculum, operculum na siya, or operculum. So when an egg has operculum, you describe it as operculated, okay? Again, usually seen in trematode eggs, okay? All right, so not useful for operculated eggs like clonorchis, opistorchis, and heterophytes. Clonorchis, familiar. What is, again, the common name of your clonorchis? Lumabas sa boards namin, press the buzzer na. You have your Chinese liver fluke or oriental liver fluke. <laughs> Sana naman, okay, all right. Again, I, I am emphasizing. I cannot emphasize enough, okay, the importance of knowing the common names of your parasites. Guys, plus points niyan sa board exam. Please, please, okay? All right, lumalabas of boards. All right, okay, ayan. <clears throat> and now we go now to the materials and reagents. They are quite the same. Uh, I just highlighted the main reagent, which is your saturated brine solution. So as you can see, NaCl is 40 grams, so that's quite a lot. And distilled water lung is 100 ml. Okay, and you need to check for SG. You can check for SG um, for, it should be between 1.18 to 1.20. Okay. All right, now we go now to the procedure. So for the procedure, um, what we need first is a vial, okay? Um, again, we'll show that in the video. Vial, usually what we use here is the, is the vial that we, <laughs> we recovered from hospitals, kato mga old vials from medicines, yes, or kana mga liquid medicines na ilang ginatusok, no? Uh, like mga dextrose and all that, all right? So vial, label, and then you fill vial with a brine solution that is half full, okay? Of course, it should be labeled. Next, you place a half a gram, one half gram of stool lang. I think mga the size of a thumb, mga half, half the size of a thumb. And then you mix it with your brine solution until you form a homogeneous suspension, a clear suspension na, na mix na talaga yung, um, that your, your sample has been mixed thoroughly. All right? Okay, so 
here is it, uh, here is your the brine solution, a uh, half full in the vial, one half grams of stool, ayan, okay, and using an applicator stick, you mix, okay, until you form a homogeneous solution, okay, all right. The next procedure, we add more brine, okay, to the brim or to the top of the vial, and then once you can see already like the top with fluid already or with the brine, you then put a cover slip, okay? Uh, slowly lower a cover slip at the top, okay? And then you leave, leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. Because during this time, the parasites will then float na towards, the, towards the top. And the cover slip will get, no? Or will catch the parasites that will float to the top, okay? All right, ayan. So, add more brine. Sorry guys, ang pangit. I don't know how to, to animate. Sorry naman. And then after, diba, since you put more brine, so it will mix together. So here is your final solution. And then you add then your cover slip at the top. Okay? Alright. And then leave it for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Alright. Now here is your, the itsura, no? this is how it looks like. This is your cover slip, the side view. Okay, ang appearance. And this is the actual preparation. Ayan. So as you can see, the cover slip is at the top of your vial or tube. All right? And the parasites will float to the top. Okay? Will rise to the top. Okay? And the cover slip will catch those parasites. Okay? And then after 10 to 15 minutes, you then get the cover slip and then place it on a glass slide. Ayan. So this now contains the parasites. Okay? All right. And you then examine that under the microscope. And then you report, again, same, number of eggs seen per parasite name per cover slip. So, example, 58 Ascaris lumbricoides eggs seen per cover slip. Or if no parasites, no ova seen, all right? And if, uh, yeah, okay. But again, protozoan parasites are destroyed by the <clears throat> reagent, all right? Okay, so that's very simple. That's the procedure for our brine flotation method. So, Again, the point is it floats. Your parasite floats to the top. And the reagent that you use is brine solution. Okay? All right. <clears throat> I hope that, uh, that you get it. And again, I will provide a video for this, for the demo, um, uh, for the laboratory demo. No, We'll provide a video for this, brine flotation method. Okay? All right. Now, for the next uh, video, no, uh, our continuation of our recording, pre-recorded lecture on the concentration techniques, we'll continue with the different methods of the flotation method. The different techniques of the flotation method, yes, methods, and then we'll start with zinc sulfate flotation method. All right, so I'll see you on the next video.